Previously on our rear wheel drive Lancer swap. Whenever you're undertaking a huge build like our rear wheel drive Evo here, you always get to a certain point in the build where I guess you'd say you'd lose motivation or you're a bit stuck with what to do next because there's just so much to do. That's kind of how I've felt about this car in the last week and a half. But I find whenever stuff like that happens, it's best to make a list and prioritize those jobs. Luckily, we have that motivation back now and I'm freaking stoked to get back into this build. So I've done a couple of things off camera that I want to update you guys on. We now have the side skirts that fit our kit. At the moment, they're just dummy fitted so obviously there are a couple of gaps but basically the side skirts that I had before were for the old C Lancer body and they didn't meet up with our guards luckily I managed to get a hold of the actual side skirts from this kit which is amazing so it all fits up we do still have this gap between the flare and the side skirt for some reason not quite sure why that is but the kit never really was made to meet up with the flare like you would on a stock Evo not sure whether I'll do anything about that because when you stand back I wouldn't say it's a massive issue. But these side skirts are actually a bit more aggressive than our last ones and a little bit lower and I think they look so darn good. Also, you'll notice that our wheels are now sitting out at our guards. That's not because I've put spaces on yet. I literally sat the wheel and sat the body on the wheel just to see what this will look like once we have our wheel fitment Correct. And as you can see, it instantly makes the car look so much better. And I'm really starting to like this rear bar, especially once you have the proper fitment at the rear. But of course, we won't know what that looks like properly until it's painted. So I'm making moves to have this thing running in the next couple of weeks, which is really exciting. And today we're gonna to be doing some fun stuff. First things first, I am going to put the bonnet on the car so that we can get this centerpiece of our bumper sorted. And then we can start making a couple of trims to it, making sure it fits up. But also just because I want to see the car with the bonnet on and looking kind of complete. Doing little things like that definitely gives me motivation to continue on with the build once you see it starting to come together. Also, this is just killing me. Like I can't handle this just sitting here and looking super ugly. We're also going to be doing some intercooler piping in the engine bay, which is really exciting. So it's going to be a really fun episode today. But first things first, let's go ahead, chuck this bonnet on and see where we are with this front bumper grill thing. I'm freaking loving it, let's go. So this goes in here. And it fits pretty nicely at the edges, well actually really nicely with the headlights, but see in the middle here, it's got a big bow. So we've got to basically try and fix that. It's gonna look so good though. The bonnet being on the car changes the whole look completely once again. This thing looks so damn aggressive. So we did manage to get the gap so much better. I'm not gonna like absolutely perfect it right now because as you can see the bonnet needs some work anyway. So I wanna make sure it's all kind of equal, but basically worked really well. Use a heat gun and then a block of wood, wedged it in, heated it up heaps. I did, I did put a slit here and a couple of slits underneath back here just to give the it some like play, just to weaken it a little bit. And then we heated it up, lifted it up, and now that's nice and pretty even. And now what we're gonna do is just make the front a little bit better because we're gonna blend it in of course to the bumper. And also I think I'm gonna go ahead and just round these off as well because it's a little too time attacky right now of how aggressive that front is. I think we're getting somewhere with this front bumper. In fact, I think it looks bloody good. We rounded off the corners, we fixed the middle bit, and this is what it looks like. Look at that. I think that looks wicked. So, the middle bit, we shaved it right back, and then I'll mold it into this bumper. I'll probably shave it back a little bit more, just because on the actual Evos, uh, somewhere back, like here, and there's quite a big gap through the front. But I mean, as it sits, that's looking a million times better than what it did previously. Here's a quick picture of what it used to look like. 
and this is what it looks like now. We've got the side bits on as well, but there's a lot of work left to do before they're, they're finished, but I'm really happy that we've decided to mold it into the fenders, into the bumper, because it's just gonna complete the look. But like, come on, you can't be mad at that. Over the moon. What do you think, Daniel? I like it, it's getting there. Jacob? Elegant, Michael. Elegant, that's a nice word. Let's shut the boot. We've got to get the whole view. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> Didn't mean for it to go that hard. Look at this. Mad Evo views. It looks so good. Fuck yeah. <laughs> All right, I've kicked everyone out of the shop because we have work to do. And I got a little bit ahead of myself with the front bar and it sprayed some expander foam into our gaps. Here's it on the other side as well. And I actually put it in the corners. It's like... It's gone hard and it's so good. Basically just forms a backing so we can go ahead and put our fiberglass bog in here, smooth everything off and it just makes it like super easy. So what we'll do now, I've got G-clamps on here because that was to hold everything on, but pretty much we just pull the G-clamps off. The expander foam also glues these bits on as well, which is like super handy. It's crazy how strong it is, mental. So now I can shave this off with a blade. Just chuck it on through like this, look at that. Look at that, just like I bought one. Guys, I just threw the other fog light in and honestly, I'm getting major Evo vibes. This is looking so good. Front bar, what's that about? Stoked. Far out, man. Overall, the car's looking so good. Obviously, we have a lot of bodywork to do. So do not judge these right now because we have to get all the lines perfectly and super nice. But overall, really happy with the way this bumper is, especially once we mold everything. It's gonna look absolutely fantastic. Believe it or not, we won't actually be too far away from painting this car. We'll get it running first. Got a bit of exhaust fab to do and all that stuff. But I reckon within the next month or so, we should be painting this car. Don't quote me on that, but basically this is exactly how the car is gonna look. Just all properly put together and painted all one color. What color you ask? Well, you're gonna have to hit that subscribe button and find out in another video in the future because I'm not telling you now, but I tell you what, it is absolutely spicy. All right, enough of that stuff. Time to get some real work done in the engine bay. All right, so what we are doing is we're going to set up our intercooler piping for our intercooler. And that's a really exciting thing because that means that we are starting to make moves to start the car for the first time, which is very cool indeed. Next week we have round three battle royale with Keep It Reet, that's on Friday. So if you're in Melbourne, make sure you come down to Quarter Park Raceway. Gates open at 11 a.m. on Friday, but the competition goes all the way through to 11 p.m. The real fun stuff usually starts somewhere around, you know, four or 5 p.m. So you finish work, head to Quarter Park Raceway. Don't miss out, it's gonna be absolutely crazy of course we'll be there in the E36 but that does mean obviously next week I'm putting a lot of work into focusing on that with the E36 then the week after potentially we might be able to start this thing so I'm thinking with the intercooler piping to keep it like really nice and tidy I think we're gonna run down from here through this metal section that we created from our old rails to our new rails and same on the other side as well straight down and through just to keep it really nice and tidy then it'll come around to our intercooler down the bottom this is not actually the intercooler we're gonna be keeping. We are getting a bigger intercooler. So we're gonna mount the intercooler a little bit lower and it'll go higher and cover the whole hole in the front and just give us a little more room, a little more volume for boost for the motor. Generally speaking, the longer your intercooler piping is, the more dose you get, apparently. So the team at Keep It Reap tell me. So that's what we're going for. Also just super tidy looking. So we have our box of random aluminium intercooler piping here. And this is what we're gonna to use to make our intercooler piping. Some of it's from the Fevo, some of it's from other builds. But what we need to do first is establish where we're going to cut our holes for the intercooler piping. So firstly, we mock up the piping so that we can establish where we need to cut our holes. Then we mark our spots and use a hole saw to drill through the metal. To get the oval shape that I was looking for, I drilled two half moon shapes with the hole saw. Then I used an angle grinder to finish off the cuts. Once this was measured on both sides, it was time to measure and cut our piping to suit. It's kind of weird how I have a workshop full of benches and I still end up working on the ground. Like this takes such a freaking long amount of time, especially if you're not a fabricator like me. So everything just takes significantly longer, but it's very, very rewarding. And look at that. That looks so good. Just like gets everything straight directly out of the way. Very, very happy with the result. So as you can see, our 
piping is held together with masking tape at the moment. And that is because I do not know how to TIG weld. I've never learned, I will learn. I did have a quick look at a tutorial on YouTube and thought maybe I'll give it a quick go. But it's Woz's welder, I do not want to use it without him here just in case I mark something up basically. So masking tape it is for now. But I am super stoked with how it's turned out. So this is two inch and it goes to two and a half inch. So I kind of made up a pipe, I'll get Woz to weld that up and then these are just some straight cuts because obviously we needed to add a little length here. And then under here, it literally will just go, I've got the pipe just stopping there right now, but it'll just go literally boom, straight to the intercooler. But like I said, we're using a bigger intercooler, so I won't finish that stuff off right now. But one thing we will do that'll make the bay just look that much better, we'll grab a pod filter, and we'll just slip it on there. We'll just do those clamps up quickly. Oof, suss that out. That is so good. You can really start to see the whole thing coming together now. That looks absolutely amazing. Super happy with the turbo placement now that we've got the piping in. Just imagine the dump pipe there with the nice lobster welds. Oof, it's gonna look so freaking good. While we're in the engine bay, we may as well get the throttle cable done. And it's actually really easy. So once again, the awesome JDM crossoverness is working really well for us. This is the Lancer. Throttle cable, right? Stock. It goes straight into the CA18 throttle cable linkage. And then this is the stock mount right here. So this is literally just gonna go like in here and we're gonna weld this in place just like that. So it's gonna look all pretty, pretty stock, which is really cool. And then we'll go ahead and bolt it up. So that looks really good. It looks just like stock, but of course, we have to make sure it actually works. So moment of truth. Look at that. That is where we're gonna wrap up this episode, guys. I know it's probably a bit of a shorter one, but I've been super busy, obviously, getting ready for Keep It Reap Battle Royale, which is super exciting. And also, it's really important for me to take my time with this stuff, because we really want this car to last when we take it out on track. Of course you can see it's really coming together now. You can see the kind of complete vision of the car and how it's gonna look once it's all painted and whatnot. This thing is gonna be an absolute neck snapper. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Honestly, it really helps the channel. At the moment, about 64% of everyone who watched the channel aren't subscribed, so if you literally hit that button, we'll like double our subscribers, which would be crazy. But thank you guys so much for watching, as always, and for the support. I also have some new music coming out really soon that will be dropping on Spotify. Very pumped about that, but thank you guys very much and I'll see you in the next video. Kill Fevo, integral the piping, pod filter, looks insane, front bumper, yeah, noise. Peace. Bye. Bye. <laughs>